What we've learnt about what we must do here is fundamental. It's resilience building. How do we regenerate the resilience of these systems so despite climate extremes we can keep on producing grain sustainably. So why is it that we have pest, weeds and disease and what can I do to address it at the base cause instead of just reaching for a product that's going to be the silver bullet and and that, that I think is the biggest it's the biggest dilemma, it's actually a mindset around not just responding to crisis but actually asking that question why do I have this and then how can I solve it in the long term and be farming for the long term instead of just having that one season mentality. As rainfall becomes you know, more and more precious and critical we've got to get every rain drop we can into our soils and efficiently available and used. And so we need those sponges, we need those in-soil reservoirs to do that. We can pack the soils and of course we're losing that capacity. And so yeah, we've got to reverse that seriously. We can reverse it very positively by putting carbon, taking carbon from the atmosphere and putting it into the soil. And we do that of course through plants and then the microbiology that converts that plant biomass into stable soil carbon. We are, in a sense, enhancing natural microbiological systems, right? In 99% of cases, no, we don't need to add biology or bugs in the system. You know, like, sure, we want better bugs, but we don't have to add them. But we do have to, in a sense, say what is impeding, what's limiting, you know, what's preventing those natural systems from re-flowering. And can we address those limiting factors to re-stimulate that microbial activity. Now, it's the area of microbial ecology, a key frontier area. Pretty simple though, it's basically all bugs, have they got the genes, you know, the biochemical capacity, have they got the substrate, the food that they need, and have they got a conducive environment. And if we provide the right substrate, the right food, and that's root exudates and stuff, and if we create a conducive rather than a suppressive soil microbial environment, again, 99 times out of a 10, you know, we've, we've, got, we've got that microbial health developing. A lot of the time, most of the microbes are still there. They're just dormant and they're there at low levels. So let's look at how can we feed it. And feeding it is a lot more cost effective than actually buying products and putting it in. So yeah, I'm always keen when I'm working with people to find out what is their waste, how can we make something that we could either use as an extract or how can we um, work with grazing particularly and actually start composting directly on the soil surface and, and that's going to stimulate microbiology. So you look at why your microbes aren't firing, so you might have you know pH problems, aluminium toxicity, salinity um, and chemical toxicities. And this is where the innovative farmers are through trial and error saying look, what mixtures of crops, what sequences of crops, what cover crops, what rates of you know fertilizer, what types of fertilizer, all the different management practices that affect that. So there's lots of really positive things that they can do, but it's focusing on how do I lift plant photosynthesis, and we measure that with a refractometer. Um, what kind of things can we be doing either with soil management or foliar stimulants or balancing minerals so that we're supporting plant health because plants are what build soil. See, up to now we've always looked at the soil and sort of said how do we do a chemical analysis and physical analysis of that soil. But obviously we're now looking at a different thing. We're looking at life and how does living systems, living processes make nutrients available. So what we really want is a, a measure, a bioassay of the availability of nutrients, not what are the content of nutrients. And so we're looking at, yeah, what, how do we assess that availability dynamic? And, and so I think the best thing there is, yeah, can we use, for example, the plants that we're trying to grow as a bioassay, as an indicator, because if they're getting what they need, the systems are working. 